I'm Chuck, and I'm here to discuss the flight simulation that I programmed. Um, the plane being simulated here is a Cessna 140. You can notice the instrumentation is based off of that plane. Um, we're getting ready for takeoff. Right now, we're, we pull back on the uh, stick a bit, and now we're in the air. So now that we're flying, I can talk about the simulation effects a bit. This is OpenGL 3D graphics here. We have buildings, we have the runway, we have the terrain engine, and um, notice the lens flare effect up in the sky. So now we're flying, you can see the 3D clouds in the air right now. We are rolling a bit, we're making a turn. You can see the turn coordinator and the attitude indicator. There's different views here, and now we stabilize ourselves. The instrumentation, meanwhile, is updating accordingly. Here's the view of the plane from the back. You know, now we're in third person view, we are flying and you can see the clouds in the air and you can notice on the ground there's the terrain and the water. Now we're doing a barrel roll. And as you can see the flight model behaves just like a real Cessna 140 airplane would. You, know, you can do any source of maneuvers once you reach a maneuverable speed. You know, Right now we're going to do a climb where we're going to actually climb in the air and do a loop and we're getting ready to do that maneuver right now. So, as you can see we are beginning our climb and we're going to actually be upside down a bit. And notice how the flight model reacts accordingly. Once we are upside down we can pull ourselves back up and continue flying straight and level flight. Now we're beginning our descent path, we're ready to make a landing. So landing is pretty much handled based on the physics calculations involved. We use numerical integration, we have a rigid body dynamics simulation and uh, it's based off of Newton's laws of physics here and we calculate the lift and the drag forces on the airplane based on empirical test data gathered from a wind tunnel of a real Cessna 140 airfoil. So we are able to simulate the flight model accurately using these calculations. So once we have the lift and the drag coefficients and forces calculated, we can apply the forces in the rigid body dynamic simulation and the physics react accordingly. We can integrate to get our position and our velocity. Now that we are beginning to descend, we have an additional force, we have the contact force, along with our uh, lift, thrust, drag, gravity. So the contact force opposes the plane from the terrain so that it doesn't fall through the terrain. It's calculated using an impulse-based iterative method as opposed to an analytical method using linear complementary problem. So, once the contact force is in place, the plane is effectively on the ground. We have some contact friction force opposing the thrust, and the plane is able to stop. So, recap the technical details right here: the train renderer, the flight model, avionics, and um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.